Okay, welcome to 6.3 tests for parallelograms. Yeah, look at that picture. I don't know, is that a boat? Is that a building? I, I don't know, but it's pretty cool and it's in the shape of a parallelogram. So when you become an architect, for those of you looking into the architecture, uh, keep that in mind. That's a pretty funky looking thing there. Uh, I, once again, I, you know, I just do a Google, Google images search and I find some interesting stuff. And this is one of the things, if you're into the mechanics, maybe you've seen that pretty commonly. I did not know that that was such a thing. And the, the uh, parallelogram I'm looking at here, just so we're all clear, I kind of think that this hops up into this kind of a shape. So there's, there's definitely your parallelograms there. Oh, goodness. Okay, it's just perspective-wise, it's not going to look that way, but... In real life, it would be. All right. This is basically the converse of the rules we've always that we've already covered, and I actually kind of call them kind of the redneck version, basically because uh, if this, then it's going to be then your quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. If both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Make sure you've got this written in your notes. Just this part um, would be fine. If the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallel parallelogram. And if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral is both parallel and congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So opposite sides, parallel and congruent. Then you can just say, hey, you guys, I've got a parallelogram. All right, example one. Determine whether the quadrilateral is a parallelogram and justify your answer. Well, opposite sides are congruent. Okay? So if I look, if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, da, 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 do, then your quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay? Example two. Which method would prove that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram? Well, I can't help but notice opposite sides are, one pair at least, is congruent and parallel. Okay, so I'm going to go back just so you can see this. Oh yeah, opposite sides, congruent and parallel. Then I have a parallelogram. All right, there, you don't need to write them down again. It's the same thing, just in different words, maybe Maybe I should have had that one instead. Sorry. All right, example three. Find x so that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So we want to make sure this is a parallelogram in order for that to happen. Opposite side here, one pair of opposite sides are parallel. And if I find out that these are congruent, then it would be a parallelogram. So I'm going to set them equal to each other. I'm going to make them be congruent. So 4x minus 1 is equal to 3x plus 6. Subtract 3x from both sides. Now I'm going to add 1 to both sides. My x value is 7. Okay, let's just double check. 7 times 4 is 28. 28 minus 1 is 27. I put 7 in here. 7 plus 2 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. Happy, happy, because this is now a parallelogram. Example 4, find m so that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Once again, opposite sides. One pair at least is parallel in order to prove that it's actually going to be a parallelogram, then those opposite sides need to be congruent. Okay, so I'm going to set them equal to each other, subtract 3m from both sides, now I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, I get m is equal to 6, double check. 6 times 4 is 24, 24 plus 2 is 26, put 6 in here, 18 plus 8, 26. It is a parallelogram, and now you get to have a happy winner. 